Wisdom with an inheritance is good, but wisdom without an inheritance is better than an inheritance without wisdom. In the early 1600s, pilgrims from Europe started sailing over to a new land called the Americas. These people came over for new opportunities that they could not find in their homeland. One of the opportunities that many searched for included religious ones. A group called the Puritans were a part of this group. The Puritans were a group that broke off from the Church of England and wanted to work towards religious and social reformation. A part of this group was a woman named Anne Dudley Bradstreet. In 1630, she would land with her family in America and would become the first published poet in the history of this new land. Anne Bradstreet is very important to history because she was a Puritan woman that had a modern belief system compared to her Puritan background, was a strong writer, and was one of the first published poets in America. Anne Bradstreet was born Anne Dudley in 1612 in Northamptonshire, England. She was the child of Thomas Dudley, who was a soldier to the Queen. Even though Anne never went to school, she still received an excellent education from her father. She was very involved in the readings of Virgil, Homer, Ovid, and other philosophical writers. The Elizabethan era was happening during this time, which could explain her father's more progressive view on her education. At age 16, she married Simon Bradstreet, who was a graduate of Cambridge University. Two years after their marriage, Anne migrated to America. She moved with her father, mother, siblings, husband, and children. They all moved with the Winthrop Puritan group on the ship the Arabella. Once they landed, the family settled down in Ipswich, Massachusetts. From there, Anne and Simon had eight children, four daughters, Dorothy, Sarah, Hannah, and Mercy, and four sons, Samuel, Simon, Dudley, and John. It was here that Anne also started to write out her poetry, which was published by her brother-in-law back in England. From there, Anne grew to become an esteemed and well-known writer around the colonies and Europe. Anne started writing out poetry mainly for herself and her family members. It was seen as an emotional outlet she could pour her thoughts in. Emotions were not disliked by the Puritan culture, but they were seen as something personal between them and God. This is when her poetry started to take form, not only with her religious affairs, but also with her ideologies. If ever two were one, then surely we. If ever man were loved by wife, then thee. If ever wife was happy in a man, compare with me, ye woman, if you can. I prize thy love more than whole mines of gold, or all the riches that the east doth hold. My love is such that rivers cannot quench, nor aught but love from thee give recompense. Thy love is such I can no way repay, the heavens reward thee manifold, I pray. Then while we live, in love's let so persevere, that when we live no more, we may live ever. To my dear and loving husband, Anne Bradstreet. Puritan belief does encourage to marry for love. However, many women who were not married were ostracized from the faith. This could have put a lot of pressure on young girls, including Anne, to get married so they would not be outcasted from their faith. Girls in the Puritan faith also were married later, around mid-twenties. She was married to her husband at age 16. However, that does not mean that this was the case for Anne. This poem gives an inside look into what her marriage was like. As we can see, their marriage was very important to Anne's writings. Many of her poems capture the feeling of love and adoration. She has been known to describe her husband as someone who completes her, and he was a beacon of light for her in the difficult years they had in the colonies. The years in the colonies would be tough and strenuous for the Bradstreet family. One of the more famous hardships they encountered was when the Bradstreet home was burnt to the ground. Oh God, my heart did cry to straighten me in my distress and not to leave me scoreless. Then, coming out, behold a space, this flame consume my dwelling place. And when I could no longer look, I blessed his name that gave and took, that laid my goods now in the dust, upon our burning house, Anne Bradstreet. Even with tragedy in her life, she continued to pour her heart out into her poetry. This poem in particular 
struck scholars as odd because the Puritans did not value material goods. But in this poem, it talks about how she will miss the house and everything that was lost inside. Bradstreet was a very eloquent writer. However, many of her popular and renowned works are poems. Many of her poems describe her life as a Puritan and typical family life. They are very standard for what many think poetry is like. However, Bradstreet did not just write about love and for the aesthetic of life. She wrote about politics and history. This writing could be attributed to her upbringing in the Elizabethan era. The education system was very much against women, but during this era of time, girls were permitted to enroll in grammar schools, and later private schools were founded for girls. Bradstreet had the benefit of being born wealthy, a Puritan, and in this era of time, where education for girls was valued. From a young age, it was described that she would constantly be in a library, reading any books she could get her hands on. Among the many authors she read included Shakespeare, French poet Guillaume de Barthes, and Greek philosophical writings. She borrowed many literary devices from these poets, such as Endrime and Anaphora. Anaphora is a device used in writing that involves deliberate repetition of the first part of a line, personification, or making objects, animals, and or nature human-like, was also a popular theme in her work. Mine eye doth pierce the heavens, and see what is invisible to thee. My garments are not silk, nor gold, nor such as trash which earth doth hold. But royal robes I shall have on, more glorious than the glistering sun. The Flesh and Spirit, Anne Bradstreet work symbolizes a battle between material and spiritual battle as two sisters, the flesh and spirit. Like any writer, her work at the beginning is described as unmemorable and for its historical context only. It is only later in her writing career when it starts to stick and she finds success with her first published collection, published collection The Tenth Muse. Unfortunately for Broadstreet, her road to success would be filled with more turmoil than she hoped for. Even though it sounds like Bradstreet lived a modern and good life from her education and loving relationships, life was still very difficult as it was for every woman. She followed the lead of her husband and father. Puritan belief followed traditional gender roles. There were many roles for women to play. However, only men could be elected as leaders and ministers. The roles women were assigned were to take care of the house, farm, and to be responsible for setting an example for their children to follow in their parents' footsteps. Women were described as inferior to men, that the main role they played was to give birth and take care of their husbands. This was seen to affect Bradstreet, as she was said to be quiet and kept to herself. Thankfully, her upbringing did not scare her away from expressing herself through writing. Her poetry feels very personal. Many of them dive into a very intense and emotional period in her life. No tie so strong, no friend so dear and sweet, but with death's parting blow is sure to meet. The sentence past is more irrevocable, a common thing, yet oh inevitable. How soon, my dear, death may my steps attend, before the birth of one of her children, Anne Bradstreet. Here, she describes the fear she felt before giving birth, and how she was afraid she was going to die. Death was very prominent for young people in the 16 and 1700s. Childbirth was a huge risk at the time for the child and mother. Puritan's beliefs are based around the idea of predestination, that your life was set from the beginning. If someone died, then that was what God planned for them, and you had to accept that fate. The fact that Bradstreet wrote something so opposing to what her faith is telling her was almost unheard of for a woman. A majority of her poetry focuses on the idea of wanting a deeper meaning in her life. She yearned for some type of change in her life. Bradstreet would receive this change, but not the type she wanted. The publishing of her poems was a life-changing experience for her and her family. However, these poems were not published by her. Bradstreet's brother-in-law, John Woodbridge, brought her poetry back to England and published them without her consent. She describes what she felt when she found out in the author to her book. Thou ill-formed offspring of my feeble brain, who after birth didst by my side remain, 
Till snatched from thence by friends, less wise than true, Who thee abroad exposed to public view, Made thee in rags, halting to the press to trudge, Where errors were not lessened, all may judge. It describes the feeling of betrayal and anger she felt towards her brother-in-law. This was a bittersweet moment in her career. It jump-started her success and gave her more confidence in writing. But the feeling of being betrayed by family was something that would affect her long term. Bradstreet would then go on to write and publish works that would be an inspiration to other women around the world. Wendy Martin, a professor at Queen's College, said this in response to Bradstreet's works. Certainly, Anne Bradstreet's poetry has continued to receive a positive response for more than three centuries, and she has earned her place as one of the most important American women poets. It is said that Anne lived out the rest of her life with her husband and children in the colonies. She died September 16, 1672, and was buried in an unmarked grave. No one knows her resting place, but she is remembered around the world for her poetry. She made a big impact on American writing because her writing was an inspiration for American romanticism. Anne inspired a new generation of writers to give more than just baseline emotions around their writings, but to look deeper into the meaning behind them.